Meet Carol and Alex. They're in Switzerland right now. By looking at them, it could seem that Alex is just relaxing while Carol gets some exercise. Nothing is farther from the truth. These two are actually in the middle of a high-profile heist. Carol is leaving a heavily guarded facility, and Alex is supposed to be watching her friends back. But something unexpected comes up. Is it the alarm going off? The cops showing up out of the blue. Nope. Her boyfriend is trying to break up with her. Alex refuses to be dumped by text message, so that causes a huge distraction and Carol ends up getting lost. She tells Alex it doesn't matter which way he does it, she is still getting dumped. Alex ignores that and keeps trying to talk to Karim, her future ex. When he agrees to meet her tomorrow evening, Carol finally has her attention again. Alex guides her to the vehicle and they reunite. While they're escaping, Carol begins to list all the red flags about Karim, trying to convince her friend that she's better off single. We can see by now that these ladies are torn between romance and a life of crime. The relationship coaching has to be put on hold when Alex finds out that security drones have been sent after them. When those things start to fire at them, the girls switch positions so that Alex can shoot them down. Those personal issues are clearly hurting her performance, so Carol decides to use them. She tells her to imagine Karim's face on each drone. That does the trick, but the annoying drones just keep coming. Every time they think it's the last one. Here comes one more buzzing at them. Our girls are getting tired of this nonsense. If they wanted to get stressed out, they would have a day job. Once the job is done, they get into these really cool parasuits and simply jump. After that, we see Carol at the doctor. She is six weeks pregnant, and that doesn't leave her much time to make a decision. But first things first, those diamonds are waiting to become someone else's best friend. Alex gets in position while Carol negotiates with a pair of jerks. And by negotiating, we mean a trained dog versus Alex. The thugs swear they already gave the money to the big boss, the godmother. Our ladies take that opportunity to have chat with their employer. The godmother is an eccentric gangstress who takes it personally when someone tries to resign. She mocks Carol's claim that money doesn't matter and reminds her that she can send her back to where she found her at any moment. So Carol takes Alex and her bunny to a hideout. The place is in the middle of the woods, but these girls are not headed for some shabby cabin. It's more like a high-tech facility covered in mirror walls, literally hidden in plain sight. The girls spend the day relaxing and brainstorming ideas about how to transition out of crime. In the middle of the night, people begin to shoot the external walls. Alex demonstrates to Carol that these guys are firing directly at her. Their wall is very cool but someone seems to have even higher tech than that. At least the bullets are not getting through. But that's only until the hitmen find out about the latch door. The poor rabbit is to blame for showing it to them, but he is also their only victim. Alex swears to avenge little Santos. Once hiding has completely failed, Carol tries a second round of asking nicely. It doesn't work. The godmother makes her set a price to accept one last job. She says two million and asks her why her shooters were aiming at Alex. There is no answer. The godmother just begins talking about the mission. It's in Corsica, and there will be plenty of time to enjoy the trip as well. It's not like she is insensitive to her employees' needs. Carol also gets to pick her team. So off she goes once again. A man named Abner shares the details with her and Alex, they are to steal a painting from an exhibition at a convent before it gets sent back to Paris. Abner is not exactly an intelligent person, and the conversation is a bit difficult. He is unable to provide basic information for the thieves, like the floor plan of the convent. All he knows is that the painting is called the Grande Odalisque, and that they should count themselves lucky that they are not about to break into the Louvre. At some point, Alex gets offended to learn that Carol asked for a getaway driver. She understands that as a lack of faith is her skills. Here we get a quick flashback to see why that's actually true. An incident in Poland has left everyone a bit worried about putting her behind the wheel. The new driver is Sam, 
Alex keeps complaining about the guy all the way to track only to find out it's actually a girl. They get there just in time to see her getting fired by a lesser driver who didn't like the comparison. Sam decides to return the uniform right away. Something Abner did not mention about her is that Sam is not even a criminal yet. Carol has to convince her to join them while Alex keeps trying to pick a fight with the new girl. When they get to Corsica, Carol is surprised by the amazing house. The godmother wasn't kidding when she promised to sweeten this last deal. If it really is the last one, of course. Sam finds the best room, and Alex proposes they arm wrestle for it. We don't get to see it happening, but Alex is now sleeping in a kid's bedroom. Now it's time to see a man named Clarence. He's the arms dealer and Alex begins to give the first signs that Karim is history. After some shopping, Carol starts Sam's firearms training. Alex can't shut up about Clarence now. She wants to know if there are any of those red flags she usually fails to see. Maybe the drug garden or just his line of work. Carol says those two things are fine. They're actually stuff they have in common. The problem is that pair of sandals. They're too ugly. Over dinner, Alex notices that her bestie hasn't been drinking lately. Carol just gives an excuse for it and changes the subject. But a few hours later, she's caught eating pickles for her midnight snack. She hates pickles, always has. Alex's expression suddenly changes as if she had realized something. But then she concludes that it's menopause. Carol is slightly offended at the mistake, as she is only 39. On the next day, Sam asks her how the two of them ended up as a team. Carol says it was a diamond heist, and Alex was only 14. She had no idea of how great her talent would become, but she instinctively knew she could trust that girl. Hopefully, Sam will feel the same way one day. Right now, Alex has taken over her training, and all she can hear is mockery. Then the girls take a day to go shopping and enjoy that beautiful place. Carol sees a baby in the stroller, and it makes her smile. Later on, she calls up the doctor and tells her that she'll keep hers. A very hard decision. But hey, she has two million. Now that Sam is training with Alex, her aim is improving fast. But her ability to stay awake over dinner is kind of gone. Alex confesses that she sometimes pushes her too hard just for fun. Then, Carol begins to cry because the pasta she made is too salty. Alex is clearly surprised at the outburst for such a stupid reason, but she is very sweet and does her best to reassure her that dinner is delicious. Once she calms down, Carol says Sam is ready for her first real task. Alex should take her tomorrow. The task is to steal the blueprints of the convent. Carol says the only thing they must avoid is to set off the alarm. Compared to what they normally do, should be quite simple. Sam's inexperience is their only concern. She is not used to taking to people over comms, for example, so she keeps looking at the window where she knows Alex is, and Alex keeps yelling at her for doing that. But anyway, Sam goes into the building, with Alex's voice guiding her. She gets to some guy's office and copies the blueprints to her phone. As soon as the files are transferred, Sam starts to brag about her natural talent for this kind of stuff. She has just nailed her first job. Alex quickly reminds her that this is not even the job itself. The only reason they are here is because Abner is too incompetent to provide them with the necessary resources. But as they are talking, a group of men is approaching the office. Alex tells Sam to be quiet and hits them all with tranquilizers. Sam is a bit shocked to see all those unconscious men on the floor, but the empathy vanishes when one of them begins to get up. Alex decides to teach her a lesson and takes her time to deal with the guy, saying that she is out of ammo. Sam is totally paralyzed and unable to stop the guy from hitting the big red button. As the alarm begins to blaze, Sam rushes to her bike and barely waits for Alex to join her. Now she is doing what she knows best, and Alex is the one who needs to hold on and pray that it's over soon. When they finally stop, Alex complains that they must have crossed Corsica in five minutes when nobody was actually chasing them. But when they meet Carol and give her the files, she is forced to admit that Sam did all right. 
Then she congratulates her pupil by pushing her into the pool. Carol agrees to take the girls out tonight as a treat for their good work. Alex decides to wear rollerblades for no discernible reason. She is also obviously determined to meet Clarence by accident. While Carol and Sam mock her obsession, a guy who's sitting alone at a table begins to glance at them. He follows them to a street party in the evening. Alex is dancing with Clarence, and they begin to make out. Sam finds herself a pretty girl. But after a couple drinks, she sits next to Carol to open her heart. She tells her about her girlfriend, who died in a car crash very recently. They were in love and happy together, and then Sam's world simply ended, just like that. Now we can see why she was ready to jump into something as crazy as this. Speaking of jumping into something, that mysterious guy is still after his prey, which turns out to be not only Alex, but her new boyfriend as well. At first, Clarence is not so sure if he wants to do that. So Alex has to convince him to try new things. However, just when things are about to get interesting, the guy punches Clarence in the face, knocking him out. He then attacks Alex and tries to strangle her. That is not as easy as he thought it would be. They start fighting, and the man is now probably regretting having taken this job at all. By the time the sun is up, Alex and Clarence are throwing what is left of him into the river. Clarence apologizes for not telling her that he is a wanted man. She says it's okay, and doesn't mention that the guy was very evidently after her. They pick up the romance right from the rude interruption. Clarence is hopelessly in love by now. He even managed to find the Albanians who killed her rabbit. Their boss is a man named Skender. He's a dangerous guy who lives in Bardi. Clarence asks Alex to be careful. Meanwhile, Carol is sunbathing when a shadow covers her body. It's the godmother. She says she missed her. Then she asks her about Sam. If she is a satisfactory recruit, maybe it's time to replace Alex. Carol tells her that she wants both girls. When Alex comes back, she doesn't mention anything about the hitman. All she wants now is to get revenge for the bunny. She tells Carol about it and invites Sam to go with them. They'll have plenty of time to get back in time to steal the painting tomorrow. Now, we all know this is a bad idea, especially because whoever killed that bunny did so under the godmother's orders. But Alex is guided by passion. Reason never stood a chance with her. So now she is taking her aim while the other two approach Skender. They are pretending to be dancers looking for work. Skender can't recall having posted that job, but he's not the kind of guy who says no when two girls want to audition for him. Their performance is so breathtaking, and Alex's aim so precise that it takes forever until Skender realizes that all his henchmen are down. Saving the juicier bite for last, she takes down that bunny killer with a great shot. Getting back to Corsica, Alex finally lets her guard down towards Sam. She took part in something important to her, and that guaranteed her place in the team and in Alex's heart. So Carol takes the opportunity to open up as well. She tells them they are having a baby. Alex takes a moment to understand it's not a joke, but soon they're all celebrating the news. Until she discloses the shortlist for names, that is. Then they start mocking her choices. Abner is waiting for them at a farm. It's time to go over the specifics. They must take the painting from the top floor. It will be done at night, because the convent is mostly empty then. Sam will be waiting in the car. When Carol asks him how they are supposed to get in, he simply says they'll use the Trojan horse strategy. As for himself, he'll be at the food truck making hot dogs. When the time comes, Abner is the first one to screw up by dropping his earpiece into the sauce. Then, Alex gets tired of waiting for his signal inside the angel statue. Yes, that's what he meant by Trojan horse. Once they're out, they try Abner with no response, so they decide to go freestyle. Outside the convent, a bunch of trailers arrive unexpectedly. To Abner's horror, dozens of people are dropped off. They are shooting a music video at the convent tonight. In a few minutes, the whole place is full of crew members and bright lights. Sam keeps getting asked to park somewhere else because that space is reserved for the production trailers. 
After Alex takes care of the guards, the girls think that they have the whole place to themselves. Until two women get into the elevator and ask them stuff about costumes and makeup. They get out on a floor that is full of people. Abner has all but forgotten about the heist, as he has more customers than he can handle. Carol finds the panting and begins to cut it out, while Alex keeps knocking out whoever wanders in that direction. By the time Abner manages to restore the communication, it's no longer needed. The girls already have the painting, and they just walked out the front door without any issues. In the morning, Alex says that she's been dumped again. Clarence is moving to Mexico. This time she's not too heartbroken because at least they have a baby on the way. She's also happy that tomorrow is their last delivery to the godmother. Carol gives her a hug, but with a sad look on her face. That woman will never let them go, and she knows it. Two days later, Sam and Alex are in position to cover for Carol while she makes the delivery. The godmother has a new look, and it's strikingly similar to Carol's, almost as if she was trying to confuse a sniper. When Carol asks if they can have a word, she takes her to a different room and has the curtains close, blocking Alex's view. Carol takes the opportunity to trick Alex. She gives her the signal and says which direction. Alex thinks she's aiming at one of the bodyguards, so she fires, taking down the godmother herself. The place is soon swarmed by her army. Alex despairs to realize what she has done. She frantically tries to protect Carol, but she can't take them all. Carol tells her to stop. They both know she won't make it out of that place. At least now Alex and Sam are free to carry on with their lives. That's when the police arrive. Carol makes sure they won't take her alive. Four years later, Alex is growing tomatoes in a remote location. Yes, like a psycho. Sam comes by, a little upset that they haven't kept in touch. Mostly Alex's fault. Now she wants to show her something. It's a toddler. His name is Raoul. And his mother is right there as well. After four years of grief, Alex has to fight the urge to slap both of them right now in front of the kid. Fortunately, her anger is not as great as the joy to see Carol again. And this is the end. This was a recap of the 2023 movie Wing Woman by Netflix France, starring Adel Exarchopoulos and Melanie Laurent. Which thief do you think had the hardest role in the heists? And how do you think Carol escaped? Let us know in the comments below with hashtag cinema recap. Until next time.